episode of 3D Printing News Unpeeled. And today we have bring you the news that, uh, well, Mollyworks has done a really interesting deal. So Mollyworks is a company that has a Greyhound, which is a uh, kind of portable um, containerized uh, metal powder uh, solution. Or uh, so instead of having like an AI uh, kind of powder uh, creation uh, or prep powder creation kind of uh, atomization solution, you have something that's, that's portable. So you can put it in a container, you can take it with you. And this is uh, particularly interesting to countries that don't make metal powder for 3D printing, from, especially for powder fusion or e-beam. And it's also interesting for people who want to print in far off places, think of militaries or shipping companies, things like that. But it also has continuum with two U's, which is its metal powder uh, kind of uh, sales arm. Now, initially, Continuum seemed to be, Mollyworks was the main company, and Continuum was the way for it to commercialize its metal powder. And, to, you know, kind of, it was like more of a, um, you know, way for it to show that, that, that this metal powder had value, that either it was a real product. A lot of people were very skeptical. Like, if I can take scrap and make powder out of it, that seems logical. But can I make powder out of it that's, you know, good enough to make aerospace parts? Can I make powder out of it that's certified, that doesn't have problems? That There was a lot of more skeptical. So initially, Continuum seemed like um, it was just like kind of like, you know, a validation arm, if you will, of the main startup. But now... Well, it's a very lucrative validation arm of the main startup because it got at 36 million US dollars and an equity funding round, uh, private equity funding round from a company called ARA Partners, ARA Partners. Now, their logic for investing in this is they are a $1.1 billion industrial decarbonization fund, a company. So essentially, they are interested in 3D printing as a market. You know, industrial powder is used for a lot of other things than just only 3D printing, by the way. Um, uh, from painting and to, to, to all sorts of uh, powder solutions for industrial powder metallurgy. Um, and and so they see this as a way to decarbonize a part of the supply chain by using scrap materials like from CNC and other processes, by using 3D printing scrap as a, as a, as a powder bed fusion and other powder metallurgy processes input. Um, and uh, so this is very exciting. I mean, I think, I think it's a great deal for for Mollyworks is apparently they're just investing only in this, this uh, continuum, not in Mollyworks itself. And Mollyworks will obviously be the partner that keeps supplying it uh, uh, with um, with its machines for its Greyhound machines for, for atomization. So absolutely fantastic deal. Uh, so I would expect to see more of their Opti powder uh, uh, available uh, worldwide. They've got over 30 different uh, alloys, um, lots of different things, uh, you know, the regular titanium to, to uh, uh, 718 um, and all, all sorts of materials. So, you know, it's a great move. I think it'll benefit our market as well. It's also a nice, interesting way to think of ourselves as saying, wait a minute, you know, this decarbonization opportunity might be uh, very, very significant, might actually be very, very significant. Um, um, you know, outside of 3D printing, because of course, 36 million is a lot of money for 3D printing. It's one of the largest investments ever in the 3D printing startup world, but it's not made with the logic of, 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 of being solely active in our market or just being for us. So that's, uh, I think, a huge opportunity for us. And uh, also puts us a little bit in perspective, a little broader industrial perspective uh, than we might have uh, wanted to be. Uh, so the next bit of news is um, that the Fraunhofer Institutes uh, have worked together. And this is a project called the IDEA project, uh, which has actually been ongoing for about three years between Fraunhofer. So Fraunhofer is like the National Research Institutes of Germany. There's a whole bunch of them that kind of compete with each other in different areas of expertise, like ceramics or um, simulation and stuff like that. Uh, so a bunch of them worked together. One of them was Fraunhofer ILT, which is the laser one. Then they worked with uh, IPT, which is the production one. Both of those are very active in, uh, in 3D printing. They work together with RWTH Aachen University, which is also a university that has a lot of 3D printing work, um, on this IDA, industrial, uh, Industrialization of Digital Engineering Additive Manufacturing. Now, you may think this would be quite dry, um, but what they've done essentially is try to make two automated production lines from metal additive manufacturing, two distinct locations. The idea, of course, being to compare these and compare the results we're getting to them, see if our actual reliability and repeatability are actually <laughs> Um, you know, up to, to scratch, up to par. Um, and the, the further idea is saying, wait, can we implement this in Germany? And does it make sense for to do this in a fully automated way for a small to medium business? Because of course, at the moment, if we're looking at just investing in a powder bed fusion machine, you're talking about a couple of million dollars. So that's not, that's out of reach for most uh, businesses. So, you know, 
how reachable is this and how reachable is it in a kind of relatively expensive country, Germany? Are we going to just make all this amazing 3D printing technology where, you know, in China, they're just going to make cheaper printers and they're just going to be able to finish the parts cheaper, right? So they worked together with 11 different companies and research institutes, and they built two lines at, well, not exactly small to medium businesses. One of them is Siemens Energy, uh, which is a large business that does a lot of 3D printing already. Um, as one of the largest 3D printing production sites in the world, in fact. And the other one is Toolcraft, and Toolcraft also uh, uh, is, well, it's a lot smaller than Siemens Energy, I think, but 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 um, about a business that does a lot of uh, 3D printing. You see their site in front of you using, quite interestingly, by the way, uh, uh, a lot of um, machines from Trump. Um, now, what they did here is they did a turbine guide vein. Uh, this is a very high, line, high value component. We've already established a lot of interest in such components turbine machinery, a turbo machinery, energy components, these kind of things. And, and the idea is to say, okay, can we do, if we just throw everything we got essentially at this production line to, to, to improve process stability, to improve yield, to lower costs, right? What they did was something like could develop solutions from powder monitoring, process qualification, improving just generally working with little multi-laser machines, automated process monitoring, uh, looking at powder bed defects in camera monitoring of uh, the powder bed and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And also using how could we not AI uh, to evaluate all this data. Um, generally, I think this is a very exciting project. If we look at it, it might seem really dry, but this is exactly the kind of thing we need to get so many companies and so many people working together to really come up with an automated solution. So the breadth of vision here and the idea of just throwing everything in the kitchen sink and getting this automated production line off and running, I think is a very, very significant event. And I think ultimately we need to see a lot more investment here uh, to automate this because a lot of, like I say also now, that we make kind of the geometry, the shape we make in the machine, but the part is actually made in post-processing. So we have to take the part out. We have to de-stress it. We have to cut it off the build platform. We have to uh, shop peen it or do all sorts of things with it. There's all this conveyancing. There's all these guys walking around the plant with uh, uh, with carts and stuff like this. And this is not you know, this is not like a, the scalable manufacturing solutions of the future. I mean, there's people with like you know like cutting things off with like a saw and stuff like this. It's ridiculous. And also, if we look at this, you know, we've always kind of talked about being an automated production technology, and this is not the case. There's a third or more cost, or, or, or much more in a lot of cases, are just manual labor, and especially now with a, a kind of a, a you know the wish to do things more fully automated. This is a very, very timely project. Um, the other news we have today is something that came, well, a little bit out of the left field, I think, for me at least. I don't know, maybe you are aware of this. Uh, there's a company called Rosotics, uh, which is based in Mesa, Arizona. They got a $750,000 pre-seed round, which, hey, for a pre-seed round, is pretty darn nice. Uh, Draper Associates is in this, a very, very uh, uh, good name to have on board. Correlation Ventures as well. Uh, Vive Capital, I'm not familiar with the person, but maybe they're really cool. Sequoia Capital, uh, on the other hand, um, uh, you've probably heard of. Um, now, that is for a, a pre-seed round. It's pretty darn nice uh, to get that, that amount of money and also from these name investors. Um, for what these guys want to do at Rosolix, it's probably not a lot of money, actually. Um, uh, they have a technology... Uh, which is kind of vaguely explained, uh, called rapid induction printing. Now, what their idea is, is not to use powder and not to use um, lasers, right? like most people are, and not to use friction stir or all sorts of other technologies, but essentially to, uh, through induction and conduction. So induction coils or some sort, they're a bit vague about this, as they would be as a pre-seed kind of startup, um, uh, to use the conductive properties of the metal uh, to heat the feedstock, right? So you heat the feedstock um, to a certain temperature. Now, this is very difficult to do, uh, and I know this because a lot of people have tried to do this already. Um, um, so the idea is to heat the wire itself, uh, to heat the feedstock. I, I'm guessing it's wire, but, but I'm not sure. They, they, they kind of refer to it as wire and feedstock, depending. And then to print that in a, in a very uh, uh, large scale, very quick way. Now, on top of that, if that wasn't difficult enough, they want to make a foldable printer, which is deployable on location. Now, one can see already the, the defense-related uh, 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 bonus or the defense-related interest in that. And that printer would be would be called the Mantis, and it would be a foldable printer that once you unfold it, would have a build of 1.5 to 8 meters and 9 meters high. So that's a pretty darn large uh, um, uh, structure. Uh, they hope to then use less energy and be able to produce larger structures specifically for space and other kind of like applications. Now, you know, this kind of scale these guys are thinking on is very ambitious. I think this is going to be very, very difficult. 
Um, the only type of people that have been working on that kind of shape stuff is meld uh, with its, uh, well, publicly is meld with its fixture stir stuff. There's been some uh, WAM wire arc out of the manufacturing stuff. There's also been some regular DED stuff, which uses wire and robot arms and things to make structures of this uh, comparable size, but often these things are really thin. The implication here is that I'm going to be making uh, much larger structures. So there's a Resolix company, well, you know, supremely ambitious and supremely good at fundraising. That's, that's what we know about them so far. Um, so that's a very, very good thing going for them. But hey, they've got a lot of technical stuff ahead of them. So we'll see. We'll see what, uh, what that uh, means for us. But hey, very interesting to see some new technology on the block. Anyway, thank you very much uh, for your time. My name is Joris Peels. This is 3D Print.com's 3D Printing News Unpeeled. Have a great day.